Hey guys, uh, let's do a little uh, demo on how to do basic window light portraiture. Um, in this case, uh, we're not going to use any studio lighting, no artificial lighting whatsoever. All we're going to use is a window and a little bit of a bounce uh, reflector card made from foam core, um, which you could do poster board or any number of other white-ish things. Uh, so. Right now, I'm basically sitting in the same place where uh, I will be sitting for this portrait or self-portrait. Uh, in the meantime, let me get, let get up and show you what the situation is. So, I have a window over here, okay? It's a sunny day outside. It's uh, a little overcast. I mean, it's kind of coming and going, the sun. Um, but I've got this big open window. It's not getting direct sunlight. Okay, you can do this on a cloudy day, or you can do it uh, with a window that is facing away from the sun. A north-facing window is always facing away from the sun. Um, a window facing to the east if it's the afternoon. A window facing to the west if it's in the morning. Um, or a south-facing window is fine if it's not a sunny day. I have a chair sitting here where uh, the subject will be, subject being me, okay? It's close to the window. It could be right on to the side of the window. I've got it backed up a little bit from the window. You don't want it too far back, you're gonna lose the light. Um, I have it backed up just a little bit only because my camera is right here. And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of room to back that camera up much further. So I've backed up the chair a little bit. I have a 50 millimeter fixed lens on this camera. Um, that's gonna be good for portraiture. I'm keeping it a fairly low, uh, aperture number of f4. Um, now one of the challenges is when you use a low aperture number, a wide open aperture to get a shallow depth of field, which is nice for portraits, the challenge is that you don't have a lot of room for error on the focus. So how do I focus on this guy? Where I'm going to sit, there's nothing there right now, so how do I focus on that? What I'm going to do is place something there that I can focus on. Now you could grab a lamp and sit it there. You could stand anything else you wanted up there. Uh, you could put a cardboard box. I'm going to use this reflector, which this is just a piece of white foam board. I have also taped tin foil to the other side in case I want a little bit more of a hot reflection, a sharper reflection. And that's got enough detail that I think if I just craftily balance that about where my face will be when I am sitting. There's enough detail, hopefully you can see that if I change the angle, there's enough detail on this for me to focus on. And I've already done that actually. Um, so, but I would come back to the camera and I would look through the camera and, and very carefully focus that and get my exposure set. I've also got the camera, by the way, set on manual mode so that, um, well, you can see that there. I'm on manual mode. Uh, I've got the focus set. The focus is now on manual focus as well, so it's not going to change. I've already determined my exposure with a couple of test shots. I'm shooting at, uh, well, let me remind myself, it's like f4, no, f3.2. I don't know how well you can see this there, f3.2. ISO is 800, and the shutter speed is a 60th of a second. So I tested that out beforehand to kind of check everything out. Um, I also have set on my camera a timer. I don't know if you can see that, but that would be that little symbol right there. There's a timer. It's gonna be a 30 second, uh, I'm sorry, a 10 second timer. And I've also connected a little remote. Let's see if you can turn that, turn around this way so you can see this a little remote there so I can trigger it. Now I could just press the button on the camera, that would be fine. It's given me 10 seconds, it's not that far to go, but this just gives me a little bit of a head start because I can click it from a little farther away from the camera. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click that button, I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna sit down and get ready, but also this reflector I'm going to have sitting in a chair you could tape it to a light stand, a coat tree, anything like that, but just kind of want it to the opposite side of your main light. <clears throat> and maybe a little bit behind and to the side of the subject. 
So let's see if I can sit in here and maybe give you an idea of what this is doing in terms of a bounce. If I take it away, there's without any bounce. If I bring it back in, there's a little bit of the bounce. If I turn it around to the shiny side, you can actually see it reflect around on the background. So that's just gonna give me a little bit of a sharper reflection. Might even look a little bit like a skid light, a kicker light hitting me from three quarters back. Um, so if I want a little bit of a harder reflection, I can use that. And all I've done, again, is I just taped tin foil to one side of this piece of foam board. I just did little tape rolls every so often, laid down the, a piece of uh, tin foil, pressed it in. I in deliberate kind of, kind of wrinkled it up a little bit deliberately. Um, that's not that really that important. But um, So I've got one side that's white and one side that's more shiny, hot reflection. Um, okay, and I'll kind of demonstrate this for you here, what I'm doing. So I got the camera on and ready to go. I'm gonna grab my cable release and I'm gonna press the button. And now I'm gonna come and sit down. And I'm gonna give my look. All right, and that's the idea. Um, because if you're doing self-portraits, you're the photographer and the sitter, you're probably going to have to do this a whole bunch of times, and each time go and check your sharpness, make sure that the focus is right. If you notice that the focus is a little bit behind your face, which happened to me, like you might notice that your shoulder is sharper than your nose. In that case, you want to create more distance between the camera and the subject. So you back the chair up a little bit, or you back the camera up a little bit. If you notice that the nose is the sharpest thing and the shoulders are more out of focus than the nose, then the, lens, then the camera focuses out in front of your face and you need to make a shorter distance. So you scoot the chair up a little bit or you pull the tripod forward a little bit. Um, and it just takes trial and error and eventually you get it. And then you kind of figure out like what's your best side and where you're gonna look and so forth. I kind of like to do this thing where I'm, my nose is a little bit off camera, my eyes are back into the lens and just sort of a little bit of a, a pleasant smirk kind of smile, not like a big smile. Anyway, and uh, now I'm going to show you what the picture looks like. And here is our final picture. Uh, now this is kind of my, what I feel is my best um, look or best image, uh, and it's been edited just a little bit, but I'll take you through some of the other ones. Um, here's the very first picture I shot. And uh, just to get focus, to check focus, and then sat in there for a couple test shots, decided, ah, I don't want the shirt open, buttoned up the shirt. Actually, that's a totally different shirt uh, that I changed into. And what I was looking for in the first few shots, we'll see here, I was trying to check focus. And I'll show you what I mean about um, determining whether your focus is too close or too far. So if you look at this extremely close up image of me, uh, the collar, back behind me. This area right here is pretty sharp. I can see the threads in the shirt. The hairs on my chinny chin chin, not so sharp. So that tells me the focus is too far uh, behind me. That means I need to sit back a little bit into that plane of focus. So either I push the chair back, I sit farther back into the chair, or I pull the camera away from the chair. Because that plane of focus is a certain distance from the camera. And as I move farther back, I enter that plane of focus. Or as I pull the camera farther back, that plane of focus comes to where I want it to be. Um, so I was doing a few different uh, test shots here. This is before I really started to pose or think about it. And at some point, uh, this is probably not it yet, but at some point I got the focus to be where I wanted it to be. This is closer, it's not perfect. Hairs are still a little bit less sharp, but the sharpest part is now like at the front of the collar. So I just did this like little by little until, let's, let's skip ahead a few shots here. And I was changing the composition slightly, you know, how high up in the frame do I want the head versus the shoulders, and how much space do I want above the, the head. So here it gets really sharp. Now I've got the sharpness right where I want it. Um, and hairs like on a beard like that, really easy way to tell focus. You know, of course, where I really want the uh, focus to be sharp is in the eyes. Um, but with f3.2 or f4, 
I think I was shooting, yeah, 3.2. Uh, it's not razor thin. I, I've got a little bit of room. So as long as all, you know those things are in focus, they're probably the eyes are going to be in focus about when the, the hairs on the beard are in focus. Uh, but I also recognized that mm, this is a little dark, and so I opened up the aperture a little bit, or I increased the ISO. And once I got that determined, I knew my focus was on, and I knew my um, exposure was good. Then I just shot over and over and over again. I mean, not that many, but maybe another six or ten images, and just kind of, you know, try different expressions, try different looks. You know, where do I want the shoulders facing? Where do I? Oh, and here's my last one where I also included color check or passport to do white balance. And then uh, once I determined this was the best one, it went into Photoshop for just a little bit of editing, retouching. Did some basic edits in, in Lightroom first to overall tonal range, and then opened to Photoshop for a couple of um, little adjustments. You know, retouching uh, little bits of lint or something on the shirt, a couple little blemishes on the face, reduce the wrinkles a little bit, brighten the eyes a tiny bit, you know, that kind of simple stuff. Um, and if that doesn't sound all that simple to you and you want to know more about it, I've got plenty of videos to show you all of those kinds of edits in Photoshop. And that's it.